I'm David Mylan Kaufman. I am a professor of neurology and psychiatry at the Albert Einstein College of Medicine, and I work full-time at the medical school's main teaching hospital, Montefiore Medical Center. Actually, I've been there since 1968 when I arrived as an intern from being a medical student at the University of Chicago. I'm a practicing neurologist. I deal all the time with the psychiatry service. I teach the psychiatry as well as the neurology residents and junior attendings. Oh, it's the only book in its field. Clinical Neurology for Psychiatrists fills a niche. It's more than a niche. I mean, it's an absolute gorge. I mean, the separation between neurology and psychiatry is unconscionable, just absolutely unconscionable. They really both deal with the brain, behavior, cognitive functions, and other intellectual aspects of life. And the book tries to bring everybody back together again. The book is aimed towards psychiatrists to tell them what they need to know about neurology, how neurologists think, how neurologists can be helpful for their patients. It also tells psychiatrists that they may knowingly deal with the psychiatric patients or unknowingly deal with a psychiatric problem. They better play heads up ball. It is highly successful. That's how it's different. It's a great book. It really is. It teaches people what they need to know. I've been a professor and an active doctor in a major, major New York City hospital. I've seen all of these conditions. I know what psychiatrists need to know, and the book tells them that. Moreover, it shows them it. We have marvelous, marvelous pictures from our artists who, since Da Vinci, haven't been better. Um, they are really good pictures. It shows patients uh, with these various illnesses. And neurology is much more visual than psychiatry. Psychiatry is literary. It's articulate. It may be charming. But neurology has Babinski signs. It has MRIs. It has EEGs. It has gait impairments. And we show them this and we discuss it. And psychiatrists who read this book will be much better able to take care of these patients. And as a bonus, one of the main reasons why people buy the book or should buy the book is it prepares them for the American Board of Psychiatry and Neurology. The most exciting aspect is we're now linked to the internet. People can access all the information. We have up-to-date information, new pictures. We discuss new diagnostic treatment, new diagnostic procedures, and new treatments. Deep brain stimulation, the new anti-epileptic drugs, the new pain treatments, and various surgical procedures that are all today. The book is geared to psychiatrists who see patients who conceivably have neurologic problems. It's also written for the intellectual psychiatrist. Psychiatrists are avid readers. They appreciate the book. The book complements them. It addresses them as fellow clinicians, well-read, well-educated people. The readers of the New York Times, for example, would love to read the book. The new features of the book are we correlate neurologic illness with the DSM-5. We present newer medications. We have new questions presented in the test format, which incidentally is a major feature of the book. Our studies of medical student education have shown that the best way to learn is the question and answer format after an introductory, let, after an introductory talk. We have innumerable questions and answers after each chapter, and then at the end of the book, comparing conditions in the various chapters. They are all clinically based, and there are many basic science questions in the book.